Welcome back. If you're just joining the series, you may consider watching the setup video so you're ready to keep coding and learning. In this video, we will cover how browser compatibility impacts our CSS. Check the video description for a link to an article with the video transcript and code samples from this lesson. First, let's learn what browser compatibility means. Browser compatibility refers to the fact that not all CSS properties are supported, or not supported in the same way, across all browsers. When we think of desktop compatibility, we often focus on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Internet Explorer. There are also mobile-specific browsers such as Opera Mini or proprietary manufacturer browsers such as Amazon Silk. Some browsers are geared toward a specific region, such as the predominantly Asian-preferred UC browser. Typically, focusing on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Internet Explorer, also known as IE, Edge, and beyond, will get you acceptable coverage for the most users, unless you are marketing to predominantly non-US or non-English speaking users. I'm personally not familiar with those challenges, so I encourage you to research popular browsers for your target audience. One tool to help discover both browser compatibility of CSS properties, as well as estimate browser usage of your audience, is called Can I Use? Visit caniuse.com and we'll search for grid, which is a display value we used in the card lessons and a relatively newer property to CSS. My typical process of using this resource is to first check the usage percentage. As of writing this lesson, that number is estimated at 93.5%, which means you can expect that 93.5% of visitors will be using a browser that has good support for Grid. Then, I look at the top four browsers we mentioned, in particular, Internet Explorer. The reason is that up until January 15, 2020, Internet Explorer notoriously lagged in support for more recent additions to CSS, which included Grid. As of that date, IE switched to being a Chromium browser, which means it is now very comparable in compatibility to Chrome. Can I Use helpfully highlights full compatibility in green, incompatibility in red, and partial support in yellow. We can hover over a yellow cell such as for IE 12 through 15, and we are given more information about what may be unsupported. In this case, it says it is supported for this set of browser versions, but only with the dash ms prefix. Hmm, what's a prefix? A prefix refers to the way browser makers flag certain in-progress feature additions, and is commonly used to onboard new CSS properties. Once the browser makers determine they've adequately supported the feature and the CSS property spec is sufficiently complete, they may drop the prefix in later versions in favor of the name and values determined in the CSS spec. We can use another tool to generate prefixes called AutoPrefixer, available online at autoprefixer.github.io. We'll update their example class in the left-hand editor to just display grid. You'll see that on the right side, Auto Prefixer generated the prefixed version of the value, dash ms, dash grid. Since we know from Can I Use that the prefix is only needed in older versions of IE, it's important that both the prefixed and unprefixed display values are included. This provides the best chance of compatibility across the most browsers. Due to the CSS cascade, it's also important that the unprefix property name is last in order within the rule. Let's open our project in VS Code. If you are just joining us, you can download the starter project to catch up. See the link in the video description. Today, before we run the project, we're going to add auto prefixer to our build so that we can automate adding the prefixes rather than coming to the online tool and manually adding them. In the terminal, type npm install dash dash save dash dev auto prefixer to install auto prefixer. 
After that install completes, we also need to run npm install dash dash save dash dev and gulp dash post CSS as a helper to make auto prefixer available to our build process. Then open gulpfile.js and at the top we'll add const post CSS equals require and in parentheses and quotations gulp dash post CSS and in that line with a semicolon. Following that, we'll do almost the same thing, but for auto prefixer and requiring auto prefixer. This will load these tools, and then we need to add them to, into our build process during the style phase. So we'll include them in that function with dot pipe, parentheses, post CSS, parentheses, straight brackets, auto prefixer, parentheses, double curly braces with the value grid, colon, true. Order matters, so we include it prior to the file being sent to the dist folder so that the final distributed file includes the browser prefixes. Finally, we need to open package.json and add the following browsers list array to the end of the file with last two versions, greater than 0.2% and not dead. This means to prefix what's needed to support the last two versions of browsers unless they are considered dead or less than 0.2% of market usage. You can view precisely what browsers this will include by checking the browser list service. For demonstration purposes, we'll change one more thing temporarily in the gulpfile.js file. In the watch function, let's set the base dir to dist to serve the compiled files instead of the source files to the browser. That way we can view prefix styles in the browser. Next in the terminal, type the start command npm run start to run the project and update the browser URL to include slash card-layout.html. We will need to open card-layout.css and just do a save to trigger the auto prefix process to run. Since we just added the prefixing, it hasn't yet been done to the previously saved file. Before we look in the browser, we see we have a couple new messages in Terminal regarding certain properties of Grid and their compatibility with IE. On your own, you can follow up with the items noted by checking on Can I Use to determine which version of IE is impacted. Okay, let's switch to view our styles in the browser. Since we are using Chrome, we have full grid support, but let's inspect and look at our card-row. You will now see that Inspector shows the prefixed versions crossed out. That is because those prefixes are both unsupported and unneeded in Chrome. Instead, it skipped over them and used the supported property of simply display grid. If we test toggling off display grid, Chrome is unable to use grid display at all since it does not recognize the dash ms prefix. We can revert the change we made in gulpfile.js to serve from source again. Now you can continue to write your CSS as we've learned, and if auto prefixer recognizes a property needs prefixed, it will automatically do it for you. While we won't take the time to fully explore it in this lesson, there are tools available to review your CSS layouts by simulating many of the desktop and mobile browsers. The most popular one is called Browser Stack, and there is a limited free account available. Using this tool, you can open your website within various browsers to do a visual check to catch any other issues that cannot be resolved by prefixing alone. Once you have a published website, you can make use of analytics tools to learn what browsers your visitors are actually using. Then, you can use that data to see if there is worthwhile investment of your time to resolve any issue in those browsers. Stay tuned for the next video, where we will learn how to adjust our CSS for mobile browsers, a technique called responsive design. Be sure to subscribe! Support this project on Patreon. The link is in the video description.